Hey there, this is Evan with EV3D Printing. In today's video, I'm going to cover the last part of installing Clipper on the Ender 3 V2, and that is setting up pressure vents. I know it's been a while since my last part on installing Clipper on the Ender 3 V2. I've had some health issues come up. It's made it quite difficult to get some videos out regularly. Um, I've also made quite a few changes, put belt drives on the Ender 3 Pros. I've also been working on the Rat Rig printer. It's, I've had trouble sourcing parts for that as well. I'm more active on Instagram, so if you would like, you can follow me on there. I have a link to it on the homepage of YouTube here. You can just click on that and follow me on Instagram. So that's a bit of an update of what's been going on. So getting back to the topic of the video, what is pressure vance and why do you need it? Quite simply, pressure vance controls the filament flow rate in relation to the speed of the printhead. Take the famous Chep Cube for example. On the stock Moreland firmware, which doesn't compensate for filament flow rate, You'll more often see bulging in the corners, and this is due to excessive filament being deposited when the movement of the print head is basically zero. In this video, I'll go over two ways on how to set a pressure advance. The first way is printing a test object where the pressure advance changes value based on the layer height. The second is a derivative off of Marlin's linear advance testing where it prints a few lines and each line is a different pressure advance value. I'll get into more detail into each section of the pressure vance testing, but that's enough for me. Let's get into setting up pressure vance. So the first test we're going to perform to set up pressure vance involves printing this tuning tower. I'll provide a link in the description below to where you can go to the Clipper Docs page to download the tuning tower. You just click on this little link right here and it'll automatically download the tuning tower for you. I'm going to first cover um, slicer setting changes and then I'm going to go over into what we need to input into the command line on the Clipper user interface of your choice. I'm going to be using Super Slicer for this demonstration. You can use whatever slicer you're comfortable with or like using. All of the settings should be the same as far as what we need to change in printing this tuning tower. The first setting we're going to change involves the perimeters. We're going to make sure this is set to two. Some people uh, print this tower with one uh, called base mode, only one outer perimeter. I recommend using two perimeters as well as the documentation recommends using two perimeters as well. The next setting we're going to change involves the layer height. We're going to set this to a very coarse layer height. I'm going to use 0.28. The clipper documentation recommends using 75% of your nozzle width. For a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, that would be a 0.3 layer height. For most Ender 3 V2s, we're going to stick to the magic numbers. You can watch a CHEP video on that, which is a step value of 0 0.04, so 0.28 falls roughly around 75% of the nozzle height. The next slice of setting we're going to change is infill value. We don't want any infill for this print whatsoever, so we're going to set this to zero. The next values we're going to change involve our printing speed. We're only focusing on two values here, which are the internal and external parameters. So we're going to change these to 100 millimeters per second for both internal and external parameters. The next value we want to make sure that's disabled is any acceleration control values. So in Super Slicer, we just set the value to 0%. In Cura, you just uncheck the checkbox for acceleration control. The next setting we're going to change is extrusion width. We're going to set our perimeter value to 100% of the nozzle width. In Cura, this would be 0.4. In Super Slicer here, I'm just going to change perimeter to 100%. 100% and external perimeter to 100%. The last setting we're going to concern ourselves with involves layer time goal. This is to ensure that we're getting 100 millimeters per second speed on our print during the printing process. Our printing time may be lower than this set value, so we want to disable it so our print head doesn't slow down during the printing of the tuning tower. So I'm going to enter zero for this value to disable the layer time goal. That should be all our slicing setting changes we need to change. So we're going to go back over to 3D view. We're going to slice this up and then we'll send it over to the printer a while. Before we get to printing the tuning tower, there are just a few commands we need to input into the command line. The first up is going to set our square corner velocity and acceleration value. So we just copy this to clipboard and paste this into our command line and press enter. The next one is going to be determined on what extrusion setup you have. For me, I have a direct drive extruder, so I copy this line that ends in 0.005, and I press enter for that. If you have a Bowden setup, 
you're going to want to pr uh, copy the command line that ends in 0 .020. 0. What this does is just increase the step value of the pressure advance value between layers. So now we have those two commands entered into our command line. We can go over here and start the tuning tower test print. I will cut back once this tuning tower test print is done and I will go over the results to help determine the pressure advance value. One note I wanna make about printing this tuning tower is you may need to end the print early. Just watch for gaps in the corners developing or if the corners start rounding way too much. If that happens, you're at the point where the pressure advance value is just way too high and there's no need to print any further. So now that our tuning tower is done printing, I wanna point out that I did actually end this print early and I want you to notice here in this corner specifically where you can see that the print quality starts to degrade way too much. As it starts skipping here about halfway up, any higher than this, the pressure advance value is way too high and there's no need to run the print any further. So below this line uh, where the bulging happens, that is where the pressure advance value is way too low. So somewhere between this transition of the pressure advance value being way too low and the pressure advance value being way too high is our perfect pressure advance value. And that is what we're going to determine and calculate once we get the calipers out. How do we look at this and determine our pressure advance value? Well, what we're going to need is we're going to need a set of calipers. Okay. And how we determine this is we're going to be looking at this corner here. Now we'll see gaps on the back side and then we'll see gaps on the front side. We're kind of looking for the transition between the front side gaps and the back side gaps. So somewhere in the middle range of right about here, I would say is a good pressure advance value. Okay, so then what we do is we take our calipers and we turn them on first, and then we measure up from this bottom lip here up to about the where we want the, uh, the transition between the front side gaps and the back side gaps. So I would say a distance right around here is a good pressure advance value and we get a reading of 8.75. So we will head back over to the computer, do some simple calculation, and then we will be able to, uh, to determine our pressure advance value. So let's head over to the computer and figure this out. So back over here at the computer, you really don't need the computer for this part. You just, it's easier for me to visualize it for you guys. You just need a calculator, but we're going to do a simple calculation to figure out our pressure advance value. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow this formula right here that's highlighted. And what that does is we take our starting pressure advance value, which was zero, and we take our measured height and we add those together. So zero plus our measured height is going to equal our measured height. So we input our measured height here of 8.75, and then we multiply that by our step factor, which would be either 0 0.005 for direct drive extruders or 0 0.020 for Bowden extruders. So we multiply this by 0 0.005, and then this value right here is what we're going to input into the extruder section of our printer config file. So I'm going to hop over to the printer config file and input this into the extrusion section. So now over at our Clipper user interface, what we're going to do is we are going to open the printer config file and we are going to scroll down to wherever you have the extruder section. All right. And what we're going to do is I already have this in here, but I'm going to go through it. That way you know what to do. We're going to enter in, in the line pressure advance and then put in our value that we calculated over here. So to do that, we type pressure, pressure advance. We're, you need an underscore between pressure and advance, colon, and then 0 0.043 uh, 75. And then I like to lab label these with a comment. So this will be hatchbox PLA. And then that way we know what uh, pressure advance setting this value is associated with. And for pressure advance, now I typically don't do it between types of filaments or brands of filaments, I should say, um, but you will need to calculate pressure advance for each type of filament. So 
pet g will have its unique value abs will have its unique value um, i have ninja flex that'll have a unique value so for each type of filament you should at least run a pressure advance value for that so commenting on this next line here the pressure advance smooth time what this is is the amount of time in seconds that clipper uses to calculate the average extruder velocity for pressure advance a larger value here results in a smoother extrusion factor the default value for this is 0 0.04 now a higher value would result in smoother extrusion a lower value is resulting in a more abrupt extrusion now this value is going to be unique for your printer and your setup i just use the default value it seems to work well for my extrusion setup i have dropped it down lower i've seen slight differences in print but not significant um, again this is something you're going to have to play around with just to see if the value changes the quality of print that you get out so now that we have our pressure advance value inputted here, we're just going to save and restart Clipper. Next up, I'm going to go over the second technique on how you can measure pressure advance, and you're going to see why I prefer that technique over this one. So the next method I'm going to cover on setting up pressure advance on the Ender 3v2 involves something similar to Marlin's linear advance calibration. This is an image from Teaching Tech's calibration page on linear advance. This is very similar to the method we are going to be using to set up pressure advance. So now over here at the pressure advance webpage, I want to reiterate this caution at the top of the page as well. Just make sure your start G code is correct and your start macro is correct in your slicer and everything's up and running correctly with that. So now that is out of the way, I'm going to walk you through on how to set this up for your printer. So printer name, whatever you whatever you want to name your printer, just E3V2. Filament name is the filament, like whatever. So we'll use Hatchbox PLA for this. So I'll just do HB PLA. Filament diameter is the diameter of filament you're using. Nozzle diameter, again, the diameter of the nozzle you're using. So the next section, the start G code, this is where we're gonna have our first major change. Um, I'm just gonna highlight and delete all this and then hop over to the slicer and copy settings from there. Over here in your slicer, you're going to want to take your start G code and basically highlight, copy this, and then we're going to paste this into the start G code section of the pressure advanced webpage. So now that we have our slicer start G code pasted into the start G code section of this webpage, we're going to set up our T bed and T extruder. These are bed temperatures and extruder temperatures. Um, for the bed, I use 60 for PLA. For the nozzle, you're going to want to set this to whatever temperature you use for the filament you're printing. For PLA, I just use 205. The next section, the NG code, again, you're just going to want to copy whatever you have in the NG code section of your slicer. I have end print for my NG code. Next up is retraction distance. Just copy whatever settings you have in your slicer. For me, I use 0.45. Layer height, I use 0.24 for this layer height. Fan speed, we don't need a fan speed for this because we're just printing the first layer. We want to make sure it's thick. Bed size, again, set this to whatever your settings are for your printer. I use 230 by 230. For speed, I leave the slow and fast speed set to default. I change the movement speed down to 200. 500 is a bit too violent for my Ender 3 V2. Retraction speed, set these to what you have in your slicer. I use 35 for PLA. Acceleration, I leave that set to default. Next up is pattern type. I leave that to standard. Starting value, we're going to want to have this set to zero. For any value, it depends on what type of extruder setup you have on your printer. If you have a Bowdoin setup, you may need to have a higher ending value than what's typically seen on ex uh, direct drive extruders. For me, I have a direct drive setup on my Ender 3 V2, so I'm going to leave this for a 0.1 value. For the PA stepping, this is the value increment between the lines of the pattern being printed. For direct drive, we're going to want to leave this at 0.05. For Bowden, I, I recommend changing this to a 0.02. For slow speed length and fast speed length, I leave these to default. Uh, test line spacing, I leave this to default as well. I do print a frame anchor, but I do not print the line numbering. I can use the lines to determine what the line numbering is. I don't need to print the line numbering beside it to know. For nozzle to line ratio, I leave this set the default for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. This will print a 0.48 millimeter line width. 
Z all set. Again, I set to zero. I don't use firmware retraction. I have that set up in my extruder. For extrusion multiplier, this is also known as flow ratio. You should have this determined for your filament beforehand using a flow test. I use 0.92 for the PLA that I am printing. I do not prime the nozzle, so I uncheck this. So the last thing we're going to change is the file name. I set this up to give me an idea of what the settings were that I'm printing. So the first up is the printer name, E3V2. So next up is the filament type. Next, I input the starting value and ending value, so 0 to 0 0.1. And lastly, I put the step increment that I use, 0 0.005. So once I have that set up, I hit generate G-code. And you'll see that the G-code is generated over here in the G-code section. The first thing I check is just to make sure the start print is it correctly inputted into the G-code. And then I scroll down and make sure that the end print is correctly inputted into the G-code. And then after that's set up and correct, I hit download as file. So now that we have the pressure advanced file downloaded, we're just going to drag and drop this to upload it onto the printer. So now after we've done the tuning tower, we're going to go ahead and show the difference between the two tests by printing the second G-code, which is the lines G-code from the website we got earlier. All right, so here's some B-roll of the printer going through the uh, second pressure advance test. And I prefer this test over the other one because quite simply it takes only like two to three minutes to get done compared to 30 to 40 minutes for the tuning tower test. Um, it also, for me anyways, it gives a better visual representation of what is actually happening with pressure advance. And you'll be able to tell that as the lines progress up and the pressure advance value is slightly increasing which with each line. So once this print finishes up, we're going to head over to the printer and I'm going to walk you through on how to determine the correct pressure advance value. This is the lines print finished up. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the line where it is the most consistent going across. Now on this lower lines here where the gap is on the left hand side and the bulge is on the right, this is when the pressure advance value is too low. And up here at the top, where the bulge is on the left hand side and the gap is on the right, that is where our pressure advance value is way too high. So what we're looking for, like I said, is a line that is the most consistent going across, which is right about, I would say this line looks the best right here, this one. And this is, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 up. So that is a pressure advance value of 0 0.055 due to our 0 0.005 steps. Now, I would say this line could use a little bit of improvement. What we could do to get a more accurate pressure advance value is we could take the line below our selected line, so a 0.05 pressure advance value and the line above a 0 0.06 and then we could set those as our starting and ending values on the web page and do smaller increments between those two values of a step value of 0 0.001. This would give us an even more accurate reading of the pressure advance value we should use. But for this, I would say the 0 0.055 is probably the, the best line out of this and that is right around the pressure advance value we should use. So that's it for setting up pressure advance on the Ender 3 v 2 If you followed all three parts of my guide, by this point you should have Clipper up and running smoothly on your printer. If not, feel free to ask any and all questions in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them in, as best I can. If not, I'll try to point you in the right direction. I'm going to try to get back to posting more regular content, at least not a six month gap between videos. So if you like my content and would like to see more from me, you know what to do. If you would like to support this channel and help me grow, I have links to do so in the description below. As always, that's enough for me and I'll see you in the next one.